I've been working with one of my clients to develop some drag and drop games over the last few weeks. And recently she gave me a challenge involving the ability to keep track of the number of drag objects and mark uh, an interaction either correct or incorrect, depending on the correct number of very similar or like items being dragged over to a drop target. And this presented a, a unique challenge, and I had to think about it for a little bit. And I was reminded of uh, a couple of features, two features that are built into drag and drop that would really uh, give you the ability to test people's ability to count a particular number of similar items to one another. So I'm going to show you that solution here today. I've created this uh, responsive design project here. As you can see, I've got some instructions at the top here. Uh, that's in one fluid box. I've got a central fluid box that's been divided into two child level fluid boxes. The first child level on the left is going to become my drop target and it's set up to kind of look like a casino table. And in this fluid box here, this child level fluid box, I've set this up to be a static fluid box because of course I, when I'm eventually done, I want the uh, chips to kind of overlap and look random as if they were in the real world. Uh, and then there's a bottom fluid box where my navigation controls are going to be displayed. Now those navigation controls incidentally are not displayed in output by default. So I've set those up to be not visible in output. And I also have a congratulations graphic that will appear uh, only once the user has successfully completed this interaction. So I've set up all three of these items to be not visible in output. You can actually show hide an item on your timeline because obviously I need to work with this interaction and having that congratulations star is kind of in the way. So I'm pretty much good to set this up now as an interaction. So I'm going to click on the interaction toolbar item and select drag and drop. Now this brings me to the first of the two features that are built into drag and drop. This feature is a way for me to identify that, for example, all these $5 chips are essentially the same as one another. So I'm going to select one of them and then I'm going to hold down my control key so I can select multiple at the same time. And once I have all of them selected, I'm going to click on this add new type because I'm going to be creating a $5 chip type for this drag and drop. And I'm going to call it $5 chips. I'm going to do the same thing for the $20 chips. I'm going to select the first one, hold down my control key, and I believe for you Mac users, it would be the command key. And I'm going to select all these $20 chips, click on the plus icon, and we'll call that $20 chips. Click on OK. And then we're going to click the next button, which will bring us to the second step of creating a drag and drop. And that's identifying our drop target. And in this case, it's going to be this blue casino table here where it says place your bets. I select that and click next and bring us to the third and final stage of creating a drag and drop. And that's identifying the relationship between the drag items and the drop targets. In this case, I really only have one drop target, but watch what happens when I select just one of the $5 chips and drag it over to the drop target, the casino table. Instantly, it creates that relationship that potentially all of these $5 chips can go on this place your bets table. I'm gonna do the same thing for the $20 chips. So now we have the basics of our drag and drop. We need to customize it a little bit. So I'm going to hit finish and this will return me to the regular Adobe Captivate interface. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select redrag the dropped source. And the advantage that this will give my users is if they drag one of the $20 chips over and it's blocking one of the others, they can actually remove it to a different spot on the casino table. 
Under the Actions tab, we're going to make some changes here as well. On Success, we're going to create a short little advanced action, a very simple one to create. Execute Advanced Actions is selected from that drop-down list. And we click on the Advanced Action icon, and we'll call this D&D underscore success, or something like that. And we're simply going to show our navigation buttons, the back and the next. And we're going to show that congratulations icon or star or graphic, whatever you want to call it. That's it. So we're just showing what was previously set to be not visible in output. I'm going to save this as an action. Click OK. Click Close. And you'll see it now selected as our on success action. In this case here, I'm going to give my users infinite attempts. So I'm going to check that. And there's really no reason to even have an on failure action. So you could set that as no action. Uh, because I'm not going to need a failure caption or a success caption, I'm going to uncheck those. And I am going to set this up to reset if the user gets the wrong answer. So if they bring the wrong combination over uh, and hit submit, it's going to send all those chips back to their original location. Now this slide, uh, this drag and drop slide, automatically pauses at 1.5 seconds. Uh, I can set that to be a different amount, but the most important thing here is that for your navigation controls, which we're going to display if they're successful, we want to pause those particular items um, sometime after that 1.5 seconds. I believe I've got these set to pause at 1.6 seconds. So click on your Format tab, and let's select our drop target. We're going to change a couple of things. So the default way a drag and drop snap behavior occurs is that when you drop something on the drop target, uh, it will just snap to the middle of the, uh, the item. You, of course, could change this to a tile effect where it starts, for example, with this pattern in the upper left-hand corner, works its way across, wraps to a next row, and continues. I'm actually, in this case, going to choose Absolute. And the reason for that is I want users, again, to make this feel very real world. And of course, when you place a chip on the table, it isn't going to be perfectly aligned to the table or to any other object. So this will give it sort of a random feel. And last but not least, we need to set this up so that it only accepts the right number of $20 chips and the right number of $5 chips. And that's done from your Options tab, where you can set the correct answers. Now you can see here, this is a combination type drag and drop, so any order is acceptable. But it's presently looking for all 10 of each to be dragged over to the drop target to be considered correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to change those numbers according to our instructions up top here. So in the $5 chips, we actually only need four of them to be correct, and we want them to be any four. So we just select the count to be four. And for the $20 chips, we need three. So again, we'll just set three, any of the three $20 chips. We'll click on OK, and I think we're pretty much good to preview this project and see how we're doing. Let's click Preview and Project. So here we go. Here's our drag and drop. Let's get it wrong first. We'll put in two $5 chips and one $20 chips. And again, you can see that redrag capability allowing me to move these chips wherever I wish. We'll hit Submit. That's incorrect. So they go back to the original position. Now let's do a completely different set of chips. We'll do the three $20 chips as the instructions require, and we'll select four of the $5 chips. And we'll hit submit. And we get our congratulations message, which is very dynamic. And we're ready to proceed with the rest of this project. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. 
If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.